Okay, so um, this presentation, I'm, I'm going to have two presentations here. So the first one is uh, basically the startup on uh, ROS2 and PX4. And then the second, the second is the next steps on what exactly we did uh, or what exactly we are going to do after this uh, first introduction to ROS2 with PX4. So the first, this first presentation is going to focus why, in why we are doing this ROS2 with PX4 integration, how we are going to do it. So we're going to start up first with the motivation. So wh why are we doing this? And then how we are going to do it or how we are currently doing it. And then I'm going to show up a, a demo of, um, of it uh, running. So some data stream on it. And then I'm going to uh, basically uh, Share with you some references of what you can, uh, how can you explore the bridge, and how can you use it on your on on your own uh, development platforms. So why do we want ROS2 in PX4? So one of the main the main advantages or uh, the main things that we are looking for in 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 bringing uh, in bringing ROS2 PX4 is first of all is DDS and. The thing about DDS is that it brings some mechanisms, some features uh, like uh, quality of service, security, discovery mechanisms, and those are all great features for uh, safety critical systems like drones. So that's why one of the first things that we are we aimed for when we brought ROS2 was actually like first bring DDS. Uh, at the same time, we are looking for um, a more convenient data exchange between the PINX4 internals and uh, the companion computer. Uh, right now, we are when we want to um, like uh, we want to associate uh, data that is running on ROS, and we want to control something on the on the on the PX4 side. We need to put MavRos in place so to bridge between the two parts, and that's not really convenient. We really want a way of actually interfacing directly with the PX4 internals. And the, the other thing is that well we don't want we don't want to depend on Mavlink for onboard communication. So we want to externalize whatever is Mavlink and put it on uh, Mavlink on uh, telemetry streams that go uh, through hair, and everything that is being done on, uh, on inside the companion computer. And uh, if you want to stream data between the companion computer and the flight controller, we want to do everything through through DDS. And at the same time, all of this will allow, you, and as as uh, Julian introduced, will allow us to uh, use uh, PX4 with the companion computer with ROS, in um, and at the same time, like take advantage of the of of the external computational resources that we have, and and put it uh, working in um, in devices or in the in systems that are exploring obstacle avoidance, visual inertia odometry, path planning, uh, artificial intelligence, etc. So one of the main things, so what, one of the main reasons we are pushing to this is that, so I already introduced the thing about Mavros being Mavlink dependent. So while Mavros is already industry proven, uh, we, 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 we see that it's not, it, it, it's, since it's depending on Mavlink is also depending on its definitions or of course its limitations. And Mavros doesn't allow us to actually get directly to these PX4 internals. So we'd lose this granularity of control and introspection that we want from the companion to the flight controller side. At the same time, Mavros V2, if you can call it like that, so Mavros on ROS2 is already planned. It, there's already some concepts around it, but there's no real development happening right now to actually bring in to ROS2. In the other hand, uh, with, with, our, uh, with our DDS bridge or with our ROS2 bridge, we are already taking advantage of the, the benefits from DDS we are we have faster throughput and lower latency with the links that are using the bridge. Um, we have this direct relationship with uh, the PX4 internal, so uh, it's basically a, a new warp to ROS topic uh, direct uh, direct link and direct translation. And we can also uh, the other the other good advantage is that we can also uh, tie uh, PX4 with uh, other uh, DDS the main participants without actually having to use raw so we can tie it up with other DDS uh, 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 participants that are not registered to ROS. So how are we currently doing this? So since 2017 we have something called the micro RTPS bridge 
And this bridge basically has two different split, two different sides. So he has a client that runs on the flight controller, and it has an agent which runs on the companion on the companion computer on the mission computer. So on the client side, so in the micro TPS bridge client side, what we do is like so you have this client process that actually subscribes and publishes to to the new or um, internal, so to the new or publisher subscribe abstraction. Uh, and it gets that data and it uses uh, the Eprosima micro CDR library to actually uh, translate or to, in this case, to serialize and deserialize between the data that is coming and, and going to uh, a UART or a UDP link, which basically is connected to the companion computer. And the companion computer, we have the agent side of the bridge, which basically does the opposite. So if one last side serializes, the other side receives, deserializes, and then with fast DDS, or faster TPS, so currently fast DDS of Eprosima, we can publish to uh, DDS domains and get that data uh, into DDS domains. And the other the other flux is also applicable because we can basically get data from an RTPS application running on, on a DDS domain, get the data through the agent to the UART or UDP link, and then on the client side, we can get that data and, and, and publish it to uh, an application running in PX4. So quickly going through this, we have a make target that actually um, allows us to generate all the code required to run on both the client and the agent side. So we start by checking if all the messages and all topics are actually, uh, actually have RTPS IDs. Then we check what are the messages that we actually want to receive or send. We generate the interface and description library uh, languages files that actually basically associate the data types to uh, um, to a general interface description language that it, then it's used on both the client and the agent side. And most, most of all, those files are actually used to generate uh, the client, uh, the, the agent code that is going to be uh, built on the companion computer side. So by the end of this, by the end of this, make pro of this build process, the client part of the bridge is going to be built automatically while the agent code is need, it's going to be stored and then it can it can be uh, manually manually built on the platform that you are going to run it at the same time you can also run the uh, um, or can build a listener application to actually test if the bridge is working correctly or not so wh where the, where does uh, ros2 come from or where does ros2 ROS2 fit in, in this process so we, as I explained, so we have this client and the agent, client on the PX4 side, agent on the onboard computer. And how do we connect to ROS2? So the, if we use the PX4 ROSCOM package, we, uh, we share the same uh, uh, code that is generated to the micro RTPS agent, but with the main difference is that the type, the, the type support uh, that we generated for the agent is compatible with the ROS2, uh, with the ROS2 uh, environment and with the ROS2 domain. So we can basically connect uh, ROS2 nodes uh, into a DDS domain running in ROS2. And since we are sharing the same type support for the messages uh, that are being published or subscribed in the agent, we can basically exchange data between ROS2 and the flight controller using this same bridge. So as I said, so the PX4 ROSCOM is basically the materialization of the agent side that connects connects to uh, not only to DDS, but also to ROS2. So this is a package that is required to do that. At the same time, we also need the PX4 messages, which is basically the ROS2 message definition counterparts for, uh, for the new ORB data types that exist on the PX4 side. And we need this to First of all, to generate the IDL files that we require to generate the, the, the agent code, and at the same time to generate the type support and interface, uh, interface uh, code to actually be used by ROS2 nodes. So a quick example here, I have the window broken in three parts. So the first, the first, the top one is where I'm going to run a PX4 a software in the loop uh, with the gazebo simulation as Jay has, show, has showed us already. So when I start the simulation environment, I'm going to see the window of the simulator opening. And from there, um, so this is the window. I'm just going to yeah, make it a little bit smaller so we can see it better. So what I'm going to do, I'm going, I'm going to show you is that, so on the uh, bottom left corner, I'm going to run um, uh, ROS, the ROS2 uh, topic echo to actually get the data from what I'm, 
uh, so for, to get or to send data to the flight controller. And in the top right corner, I just started the MyCar TPS agent, which uh, right now is connected to the, the same DDS domain of, of the ROS2 nodes. So on the top, on the top, uh, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I already started the MyCar TPS client. Now, just for, for a test, I'm, I started the, and I, I took off with the drone. And then on the bottom left corner, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if I'm getting any data from, uh, so we have a specific new warp topic, which is called sensor combine, which basically provides us uh, the gyroscope and accelerometer data that uh, is coming out of the simulated vehicle. And already you can see like already on the top uh, not bottom left corner that I'm getting data from the sensor combined topic. I'm just going to push a little bit further because I want to check, I'm going to show you that also the opposite is possible. So I can, so on the top, on the bottom left corner, you can see that I, I'm going to start a specific ROS application that I wrote that it, that is available on the PX4 ROS.com package, which basically is going to publish on the debug vector topic. And I do a check on the, on the PX4 side to actually see that I'm also receiving that data. And as you can see, if I do a listener on that specific new ORP topic, I'm getting that data. So current and future work, we're going to keep maintaining uh, this these same bridge and robustified where, where possible. We're going to add some more examples so people can actually use it and explore it in their side. And the next presentation is about uh, how we can improve uh, actually this bridge by bringing a new, a, new, a, new, uh, a new interface with it using XRC DBS or even micro ROS. At the same time, we are providing this and developing this same bridge on our flagship uh, development platform and, uh, and, and basically development drone platform, which is the SkyNode in Notarian. So stay tuned for it. Um, just some references. So the slides are going to be available. These are some references that you can follow up and to just understand how you can use the, how you can use the bridge and some of the packages that are that were available, and. That's it from my side and I'm open for questions. Awesome, thank you, Nuno. I uh, just wanna let the audience know that Nuno is gonna follow up with the next talk uh, as soon as we answer a couple of questions. So you, let me just give you two, two or three questions real quick so we don't overflow on the uh, sure. parallel track uh, time. So really quickly, for those that are running ROS1, MapROS and PX4 right now, uh, what could be preventing them from moving to ROS2? Um, at this point, uh, I'm not say, uh, I don't see anything that can prevent them from doing that. They just need to take into consideration that the interfaces that they're currently expecting with, with Mavlink are not going to exist. So they need to actually understand how the PX4 internals work so they can actually interface directly from something that they build on ROS2 side and actually interface with the PX4 internals so to, to get the exact behavior that they are looking for. All right, and how complicated is it to switch from ROS1 to a ROS2 workflow? Well, that's that's a question for the ROS2 developers, but no, I think overall we have those, we have some guides online how to do the migration from uh, ROS1 uh, nodes to ROS2 nodes and how to, so basically a comparison between the middlewares and how they work. So I think it's quite straightforward. All right, so swapping up a map ROS2 for the RTPS client. And, yes, uh, it's it's mostly about understanding how 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 to explore ROS2 in the first place, and then how the PX4 internals work. So you can actually, when you when we work with ROS2, we are working with uh, messages that are direct translation of the new warp topics in PX4. So you need to actually understand what is happening in PX4 so to actually interface with it. So this abstraction awesome. with Mavlink doesn't exist anymore. 